guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Jessica and I created Dolled Up by Jay so in today's video me and my new lips are gonna be discussing a highly requested topic the real housewives of Dubai I'm someone who's lived in Dubai for a year and a half so I thought this would be an amazing opportunity to discuss this show if anyone is interested in some kind of behind the scenes info about Dubai and maybe some of the places they go and some of the characters so if you're here for it give the video a thumbs up I had a lot of requests to do this video also yeah I did do my lips a week ago just FYI I might have overlined the bottom a slight amount. I'm still getting used to putting on lipstick and they're still swollen, so go easy on me, okay? I just wanted a little zhuzh, you know? I just felt like a little sprucing up. So do not judge unless you wanna say I look fabulous. Otherwise, I don't wanna hear it, okay? So I've had a lot of like subscribers, followers, friends reach out to me when they found out that Real House was of Dubai was going to be happening. They were like, oh my God, you should be on the show. And I was like, I don't want my life on TV. But I just figured let's do a commentary video about the show. If any of you guys are Real Housewives fans, you know, it might be a fun series. So, so far I've watched episodes one and two. So I'm gonna be talking about episodes one and two. And then as the show progresses, I think I might do some more episodes. So be sure to subscribe so we stay in the loop here. And also if you enjoy fashion and beauty content, I also post about those topics often. So let's get to the show. Where do I even begin? Where do I begin? So what I find really interesting is a lot of people in Western countries were very excited about this show. And what I'm noticing on a lot of local social media accounts for, you know, Dubai news, uh, pop culture, all of this, people are very against the show, a lot of them. And Sarah, one of the housewives on the show, actually made a video defending the show, saying, well, we couldn't change the name because it's Real Housewives, it's a franchise, right? A lot of people within Dubai, especially locals, are saying, you know, this show does not represent Emirati women, this show is not an accurate representation of Dubai, and people are very offended about the show. So I thought it'd be interesting just to kind of unpack the first two episodes and just discuss kind of like what went on and what I think about all of it from an expat perspective. You know, I'm obviously not an Emirati woman. I am not local here. The Dubai population is 85% expats, right? So most people are not going to be local. However, there are a lot of Muslim people as well living in Dubai, even if they aren't Emirati. So I thought it was interesting because the main thing that people were complaining about as well on the show was that the women were very taken with luxurious lifestyle and money and blah, blah blah but I'm like you know I'm sorry the entire Real Housewives franchise is built on glitz and glamour and luxury I'm sorry if anyone had a crappy one-bedroom apartment and drove a Honda Civic you know, this might be like early days of Vanderpump rules, but we're certainly not wanting to see this type of content on Real Housewives. You know what I mean? You watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, of Miami, of New York. You want to see the glitz. You want to see the cars. You want to see the fabulous penthouses and apartments, right? So I think for people to be upset that it's not portraying the accurate representation of Dubai, maybe they have not watched the show, but that's just what the show is about, is the glitz and the glamour, you know? Of course the show is very vapid and it's very, it's very glitzy, it's very glamorous, you know, we're seeing a lot of amazing footage of Dubai, so if you're someone that's never traveled to Dubai, you know, watching the show is a great way to see some of the monuments and different neighborhoods and places you might want to travel if you visited here, but there is also a side of Dubai where, you know, there are a lot, a lot of laborers and very hardworking service people, and of course they're not living in villas and luxury apartments and driving Rolls Royces and all of this, right? But unfortunately, just the way the show is, is the show is not about that. The franchise has always been about the money. That's just the, that's just real talk. That's just what the show is, right? I'm not saying that those people's lives are not valid or don't matter, of course, but that's just the premise of the show. It's common knowledge. You know, there's so many different types of programs for different people, but I will say the one thing I do agree with a lot is the swearing. I noticed there's a ton of swearing on the show and I know that this is very normal in most housewives programs in various cities. However, one thing I was really surprised by is the amount of swearing and foul language in the show shocked me because Dubai has laws against swearing. Like you can get a huge fine and go to jail. And I can't believe they actually televised them swearing and then put it on TV, even though they bleeped it out, like technically the women could all be like 
arrested. You know what I mean? So I'm just kind of surprised by that. And I do understand why Emirati people and local people and more conservative religious people who might have seen the show might be very offended by this use of language, also representing Dubai as a city, right? You do hear people swear here and you have to be careful with it. And especially if you're somewhere where you're around a lot of locals, you know, you really shouldn't be doing this because it's against the law but, and also just out of respect for the culture, right? So I was honestly really surprised that they televised this foul language just personally, because, you know, it's not the best representation if you really wanted to represent Dubai peoples. I know that there are some, you know, cultural elements to the show where the women are kind of trying to like teach their kids like cultural things, whether or not it's staged or for TV or real life, who knows, right? But that's just my two cents for now. I thought we would go over episode one first and then go into episode two. So honestly, what I was really excited for most in the show was Caroline Stanbury because I watched Ladies of London. One of my British friends was like, you have to watch Ladies of London, darling. Oh my God, you're gonna love it so much. So I was like, okay, I'll watch it. So I watched all the seasons of Ladies of London. She's like, oh, Caroline Stanbury. She's so hilarious. Oh my goodness, she's like the villain. That's like my British accent. Sorry guys, <laughs> I tried. Uh, so I was excited to see her honestly because you know, every reality show has a villain, right? It's like Selling Sunset, Christine Quinn. The Hills, Heidi and Spencer, for sure. Uh, Real Houses of Beverly Hills, Erica Girardi last season. I mean, depending on, you know, what your take on the show is. But every show kind of has a villain. So I noticed in the opening and the whole episode one, it seemed that this model, Chanel Ayan, I believe that's her name, she has become the show villain because towards the end of the show she creates a lot of drama at the private dinner and all of this so i'm curious to see how it plays out i honestly thought they would make caroline stanbury the villain because in ladies of london she was kind of like the hbic you know what i mean she had that attitude and she was very like didn't take any crap from anyone and had a lot of you know quick remarks like i'm not here for your amusement you're here for mine that kind of attitude right so i was looking forward to maybe her being the villain so let's see let's see how the show develops but i have some key moments from episode one here i'll just go over so so the beginning of the show starts with Chanel Ayan. She's doing a photo shoot in the desert. I believe they filmed the show during the Dubai winter because it's so hot right now. Today it says it felt like 48 degrees and it is June and it was only 40, but it says it feels like 48. So they must have filmed the show in the Dubai winter, edited everything because shooting in the desert now, I just did it last week. <laughs> it's hot. It's very hot. So... I thought that, you know, her story, how she's a really successful model from Kenya, rags to riches story, I always admire, you know, love that. I did find her to be very, like, you know, she's very into herself. She's very, like, look at me today. I am so beautiful. I am fashion, darling. I am fashion. You know, every show needs someone like this. And whether you love it or hate it, you're still going to watch because it's going to add some spice to the show. I do feel like some of the other characters are a tad bit boring so far. But let's see. Let's see. Also, interesting fact, the hairdresser who was doing Chanel's hair in the first five minutes of the show is my hairdresser, Maggie. So that was pretty cool to see her on the show because she's very good. I'm going to her for over a year now. And it was funny because when I was doing my hair with her, at New Year's Eve, she did my hair and she had been telling me how she was doing a lot of hairstyling for the Real Housewives of Dubai. And I was like, oh my gosh, how is it? How are they? And she's like, yeah, yeah, they're good. And I was like, what's the drama? What's the tea? Tell me. And she's like, I can't. She's like, there's a lot of drama though. But she's like, I can't, I can't say anything because of the show. And also, you know, professionalism, I get it. So, you know, at least my hairstylist, you know, it's her lips are sealed, but it's too bad she couldn't tell me any of the drama, but it is kind of cool to see that, you know, she was on the show, like that's awesome. So in another scene, one of the ladies, I forget her name. Let's just look up their names really quickly. I think it was either Caroline Brooks or Lisa Milan. I'm sorry, it's, it's so many new characters. I don't know everyone's names exactly yet, but they had an ice delivery to their home for $1,200 US, since Bravo is American, to the pool, because the pool was too warm. I'm just like, okay, so this show was definitely filmed in the Dubai winter, right? Pools are not that hot in the winter. So I think they just did it for effect for the show. And honestly, I've never heard of an ice delivery service. I mean, Dubai, you can get basically anything in the world delivered. You can get a Canadian Christmas tree if you want. So it doesn't surprise me, but I think it was probably staged for the show because pools in Dubai during the winter months of at least six months, they are not that hot at all, like at all. And most pools pump cold water in throughout the day. I mean, I don't know why their pool was hot, but my pool here in June only started to feel warm. 
Like normally it's like you get it and it's like nice and cold. So I think this part was totally staged for the show just to kind of show a bit of opulence. And I think it was honestly kind of dumb. Another aspect of the show is that you'll notice all of them have, you know, nannies, maids, house staff, all of this. This is very common in the Middle East, especially because finding uh, household help is a lot more affordable than in North America for sure. I'm not sure why, it just is what it is. For example, if you wanna have an at-home cleaning service, it's usually about, I wanna say, 12 to 15 US dollars per hour. And if you want an extra woman, it's like an extra like five to ten dollars on top. Like it's insanely cheap compared to home. So yeah, of course, you see in the show they all have nannies, they have house managers, chefs, all of this because a lot of them are a lot more affordable than North America for sure. And a lot of very nice apartments and also homes often have maids rooms or even multiple maids rooms because a lot of people do have live in help, especially for people with kids. They have like even night nurses, so they don't need to wake up in the night to take care of the kids. Kids, it's honestly insane but yeah it seems like it's very opulent but it's also quite affordable so just to put it into perspective so next there is a scene where they go to namos for lunch this is with chanel ayan and caroline brooks and then chanel shows up in this like super gold valentino like big sweater and i'm like okay this must have been january february there is no way in the last three months you would have gone outside wearing that it's way too hot way too hot and they also went to namos which is normally like insanely busy any day of the week they must have honestly gone when it first opened because i've never seen namos that dead honestly the inside is not always as busy as the outside but even then you could hear the music so the fact they filmed it without hearing the music maybe they had a special setup you know to promote Namos with the show but I just found it odd that it was so dead maybe it was for the purposes of filming but yeah I just found it a bit strange it must have been for the show again but Namos is a really fun spot by the way in Dubai if you've ever been to Dubai or Mykonos, they have Namos Mykonos as the original. They also have Namos Dubai, which is a fabulous place to go. The service is okay, it's hot and cold, and the prices are up, 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 but it's a beautiful setting and it's a good vibe. It's a lot of fun, and everyone is just kind of like kind of a bit glamorous and enjoying their lives. So it's kind of a must see place in Dubai, so I'm not surprised that they had it in the first episode. Okay, and then next, Caroline Stanberry. So she lives in a villa with her new husband, Sergio. They kind of have their like wedding engagement party on that yacht. I believe it was the first episode. And this is a common thing. You know, people are always taking yachts out in Dubai. The party did look nice. It looked fun. And then, of course, there was all the drama where Chanel Ayan was not invited, unfortunately. And then they had the subsequent private dinner with all of the memes you might have seen online with, you know, get the sage. The sage isn't working because then all of the profanity came out and it's funny because they did that dinner at the address Skyview Hotel right by the pool and I feel like they obviously did this for the show I know why because when I came to Dubai at first me and my boyfriend lived in that hotel for two months we spent the first month in the hotel side and then we moved over to the residences side but anyways they did that dinner on the address Skyview by the infinity pool very famous right overlooking the Burj Khalifa they never have dinner tables set up there. Like you can see in the dinner, there are cabanas next to them. So that is the pool deck. There are no dining tables there, but slightly behind is the pool bar area, but they do not have any long tables like that. It's all square separate tables. So this must've been a special event. She says she rented out the rooftop. I'm not sure if you can actually rent out the rooftop personally, but they must have just had permission to film. Maybe she rented it out, I'm not sure. But there is a massive restaurant beside called C'est La Vie, and that is totally a massive space, and I don't think they shut down C'est La Vie for the night for their dinner. They might have, if anything, not allowed anyone on the patio, and in that case, maybe she did rent out the rooftop. But yeah, the actual C'est La Vie part is actually indoors and has its own patio. And where they actually did the dinner, where the show labeled as C'est La Vie was at the top of Address Skyview, and it's the pool lounge. It's not technically C'est La Vie, just FYI. I saw that and I was like, hmm, interesting. But still a beautiful setting. It's still next door to it, but it's not exactly it. But yeah, that dinner, very dramatic, very dramatic. I mean, that was honestly the best part of the show. I found episode one super boring, personally. I was kind of just seeing, you know, what the characters were gonna be like. It was interesting to see some of the Dubai footage and kind of see what they were showing. I noticed that they would make some places seem like 
they were on the palm like they were panning i think to the palm and then all of a sudden caroline stanbury was in her house but her house is actually about 20 to 30 minutes away from the palm but the show was panning around as if she lived on the palm but she does not she lives somewhere called alberari which is a very nice kind of suburb and they have villas apartment buildings all of this and i actually went to a new year's eve party there and it was nice but it wasn't i'm not sure what part of it she lives in but i have been there i have seen it and it's not anywhere near the palm like the show kind of showed okay episode two episode two was kind of all right it starts with them talking about you know thanksgiving is coming up so thanksgiving is an american and canadian holiday i believe i'm not sure any other countries celebrate it it's very north american it's kind of like you have a big turkey dinner and you kind of like gorge yourself and just be thankful for your family and whatever so they were celebrating Thanksgiving and going grocery shopping and there was a scene where, she, um, I think it was Caroline Brooks, I can't remember, she is uh, going to the pork only section in the grocery store and that is totally true. So the bigger grocery stores only in Dubai have pork only sections and it says, it literally will say sometimes for non-Muslims. So if you are Muslim, I mean sometimes it might be hard for people to tell because some people could look one way, you know, visually but they're actually not Muslim. So I don't really know how they enforce it, but yeah, 100%, they have a special room. Sometimes they are large, sometimes they are small, and it will have like hot dogs, salami, all of these pork products, because many, 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 I would say 99.99% .99 of restaurants in Dubai do not serve any pork of any kind, because there are so many Muslim people here in the population. And I actually went to one restaurant, the only one I've ever seen in Dubai, it was called the Eloquent Elephant in the Taj Hotel downtown. And they serve bacon and pork products, which is crazy. And they have a, a regular kitchen and they have a separate kitchen where pork items are prepared because obviously for religious purposes, people do not want any sort of touching of any pork, you know, oils or cross-contamination with anything like that in their food. So they have two separate kitchens. So that's the reason why a lot of these restaurants in Dubai don't offer pork as well. It's just logistically a nightmare, especially in busy places, figuring out like which kitchen is this coming from, you know? Sometimes I treat myself and I buy like little salami sticks, but yeah, I don't eat as much salami since I moved to Dubai because of the pork thing. It's so interesting. Um, also on that note is one of the girls that was grocery shopping, she said, you know, there's no specific places in the store where you can just grab liquor. That's totally true. Liquor is very regulated here and you need a special license to buy alcohol. Liquor stores are a little bit harder to find. They're more in suburban areas. It's more regulated and you need like a special license to buy it. It's not readily available in a grocery store. So if you are Canadian, this is going to be nothing new because we have, you know, separate stores for liquor. If you're American, this might be like, what? It's like, Canada the same thing special stores for liquor same as Dubai there's just much less of them in Dubai and you really have to find them USA alcohol is very cheap it's a common thing it's much more affordable than in Canada I think there's less taxation maybe so I would compare liquor prices at the store in Dubai to Canadian prices which are like double of the US or more so it's nothing like it doesn't phase me seeing the prices but the restaurants is just like so yeah, episode two, I found it to be a little bit more interesting. I'm still finding personally the show to be like a little bit flat. What do you guys think? I'm finding it to just be a little bit flat, but I'm gonna keep watching it for the Dubai content and all of the behind the scenes and all of that. What I didn't like though, I don't know what you guys think of this, but when Chanel Ayan brought the goat to one of the girls' houses for dinner, I forget which one it was, she said it was like, in our culture, this is, you know, one of the most important, beautiful things we gift someone. But I'm like, first of all, where did this woman get a goat from? And is she really just going to leave it at someone's house? Like, this is a farm animal. This is a, this is not really meant to be like a pet in a villa with a smaller yard. You know, this animal needs like a proper place to be taken care of. And I really hope that it was just for the show because don't get me wrong, I wear leather and all of this, but I just think using like an animal for TV purposes is just not really that right. And the fact that it went in the pool and they're saying he went for a swim, maybe he fell in, I don't know, it just didn't really sit well with me. I didn't really like that scene personally. I feel like, you know, yes, I'm not a vegan. Yes, I just talked about the pork section. Yes, I wear leather. But when you're actually like, something about using animals in shows, I just don't like. Maybe I'm just a selective animal activist. It didn't really sit well with me. I'd be curious to see what you guys thought of that scene. 
rest of the show, honestly, it's not the most memorable for me. I mean, some of the scenes of Dubai are good. I think that Mina is kind of a cool character so far. She seems a bit chill. I thought it was funny though when Chanel Ayan said, you know, look at me. I am fashion. I am fashion. Mina, she is like potatoes with no butter. Sorry, I can't do a Kenyan accent and butchering it, but she said she is like potatoes with no butter. Oh my goodness. You know, this was crazy. So I thought that Mina seemed like a really nice character. Let's see what happens. Her patio in the sky view was exactly like where I stayed for the second month in the sky view in the residence. It's so really interesting. It has an amazing view with Burj Khalifa. It was right there. So it was kind of funny to see like, oh my God, that's where I stayed. But I am really curious to see as the show goes on, you know, where are ladies doing their nails, you know, manicures, facials, all of this. Are they gonna do some shopping? I'm sure they will. The show also had a scene in the beginning with Caroline and Sergio. I believe they were at maybe Jacob & Co or another jeweler. They were trying on like $5 million things, $1 million things. I think that obviously this is like promotion for the jeweler. You know, I didn't really think they bought anything, but they do the same thing in, you know, Beverly Hills and Real Houses in New York. They go to different jewelers, try on a bunch of things, but you never actually see them buy them, right? And so Dubai, of course, they're like, okay, Beverly Hills, you're gonna try on a $180,000 ring, but we're gonna try on a $6 million necklace. Thank you very much. So yeah, I mean, Overall, I'm gonna keep watching the show. I think it's interesting. I think it's definitely showing the glitzy side of Dubai and that's exactly you know what the people are here for. And it might not be the real side of it, but the other Real Housewives franchises aren't really the real side of things either. You know, most people aren't doing these crazy extravagant events all the time, driving supercars, having you know private designers fly out to them, all of this, right? But this is the premise of the show once again. So I would be so interested to hear what you guys think about it so far. And if you want me to make follow-up videos about my knowledge of Dubai in a series for my channel, I would really love to hear your feedback. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, definitely consider subscribing. I would love to have you back on my channel. If you're a returning subscriber and you made it to the end, thank you. I love you and you're so epic. And we'll see you next time, guys. All right, take care. Bye.